From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Mr. John Dollar? Yes? Western Union, I have a message for you from New York. Oh? Please proceed Northern Hotel, Clinton, Colorado, as soon as possible. Yeah? Building irregularities suspected affecting several insurance companies will advise regards... Signed, Albert Davies, Chief Investigator, United Adjustment Bureau, New York, New York. Uh Uh-huh. Would you like that mail to you, Mr. Dollar? Uh, no, no, don't bother. Can you take an answer? Go ahead. To Albert Davies, Chief Investigator, United Adjustment Bureau. You have the address. Confirming. Exact time of arrival to follow. Sign that, Johnny Dollar. Tonight. And every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the United Adjustment Bureau, New York City, New York. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Clinton matter. Or maybe racket is a better word. Expense account, first item, $105.63. Transportation by air, Hartford to Denver. Item two, $28.50, Denver to Grand Junction. A place busy and bustling with uranium hopefuls. Third expenditure, $100.00. Deposit and rental on a car, which I used to drive the 105 miles through the rugged mountains due north of Grand Junction to Clinton, Colorado. A place that the rental agents had described as a sleepy little mountain town. When I got there, everybody was running in the direction of what was very shortly not going to be the new school building. Like everybody else in Clinton, Colorado, I spent the next three hours or so helping to try and get the fire under control. Then finally, I left the scene and located the Northern Hotel, where the clerk was standing by waiting for me. Mr. Dollar? Uh, yeah. Operator 18, New York City, has been calling you for the last four hours. Uh, Mr. Davies, I believe. Oh, yeah. Could you put the call in for me? Certainly, I'd be glad to. I'll take it up to my room. I want to change my clothes. Certainly. Boy, take Mr. Dollar's bags up to 310. I shaved and showered, changed clothes, and unpacked. From my window, I could see the still glowing embers of the fire, red against the winter night. The school building was completely destroyed. Beyond, the snow-covered Rockies rose all about the town of Clinton, which I had yet to see. Johnny Dollar. I, uh, have your call now, Mr. Dollar. Oh, good, thanks. Johnny? Hi, Al. Say, I've been trying to get to you all day. I thought you were going to let me know the minute you got into town. Well, there was a fire here, Al. I had to pitch in and help along with everybody else. Oh, I see. Well, has Osborne contacted you yet about this case? Osborne? Who's that? Julian Osborne. Look, I talked to him in Clinton last night. He said he'd wait around the hotel until you showed up. He lives there, Johnny. He drove into Denver two days ago and told the insurance broker he thought a building that Great Eastern Fidelity covered was in real bad shape. Now, what building? Well, a new school that they just put up there, Johnny. Al, it was in bad shape. Worse shape now. It fell down about four hours ago. That was the fire, Al. Oh. Well, Great Eastern's in for $200,000. Look, Johnny, contact Julian Osborne and see what he has to say. Right. And call me back when you find out what's what. So long. Yes, Mr. Dollar, may I help you? Yeah. Do you have a city directory here in Clinton? We aren't that small. Uh, Here it is. Right here. Good. After all, we have 14,263 people. Okay, thanks. I know most of them, Mr. Dollar. Who do you want to get in touch with? A man named Julian Osborne. Uh, Julian Osborne? Yeah. Know him? I didn't know him, but it came over the radio a little while ago. They found his body in the fire. He burned to death. A four-block walk down the icy streets of the town took me to the sheriff's office and face-to-face with a heavy-set, owlish-looking man named Doherty. Sheriff Paul Doherty. He smiled professionally until I got around to inquiring about Julian Osborne. Oh. Well, uh, you his family? No, no. I, I made the trip here to Clinton to see him especially, though. I just heard he was killed in the fire. Yes. Yes, too bad about Mr. Osborne. I don't quite understand about it, though. He was school janitor. Oh. 
What, uh, what was your business with him, Mr. Dollar? Insurance investigation. Oh? Yeah, Osborne reported the possibility of something wrong with the new school. He, he did? Uh, to who? To our brokers in Denver. That's why they sent me out here. Well, <laughs> your trip was for nothing, then. Maybe. Well, you'd think if he had anything like that on his mind, he'd have come to me, wouldn't you? Yes. Did he? No. No, used to pass him on the street. Never said a word. Uh Uh-huh. Where's the body? Morgue. I, uh, I wouldn't go over there, son. I want to contact some of his family, his friends. Well, that might be hard to do. No family here, no close friends. Used to prospect for a living until he got kind of old. Then he took the job janitoring. Lived right there in the basement of the school. Eh, city will bury him. I see. How long had he worked at the school? Six months since the place was built. Mm-hmm. Who hired him? Principal, Flory Hawkins. Flory Hawkins. Where can I find her? Lives on Pearson Street. That's one block over and two blocks to your left. Number, uh, 326. 326 Pearson, huh? That's right. On son. Hmm? Bad night to go calling on her. I'd like to see Mrs. Hawkins, please. I'm Miss Hawkins. Well, I'm an insurance investigator. My name is Johnny Dollar. Insurance? Yes. Why do you want to talk to me? Well, I'll be frank with you, Miss Hawkins. I came to Clinton to talk to Julian Osborne. Oh. You heard he died in the fire. Yes, I heard. It's tragic. I'm so thankful school wasn't in session today. Uh, come in. Thank you. I know this has been a pretty grueling day for you, for everyone in this town, Miss Hawkins, losing your school and all. I wouldn't call on you, except I feel it's important. I... Excuse me, please. Sure. Hello? Who? Yes, Sheriff. Yes, he is right now. Yes. Good night. There's just a couple of questions I'd like you to answer about Julian Osborne so I can get... I'm afraid I can't help you with anything, Mr. Dollar. What? You'll have to go now. Well, look, now, wait a minute. If if you'd only... I don't want to be impolite, but I'm tired. Very tired. Yeah, sure. That phone call wore you out. Please. All right, all right, I'll go, Miss Hawkins. But I think you should know why I came here. I can assure you, Mr. Dollar, whatever the reason, I'm simply not interested. I was sent here because Julian Osborne advised the insurance company that he suspected certain building irregularities had gone into the new school. Miss Hawkins, did Mr. Osborne ever mention anything like this to you? No. Now, will you please... Do you have an idea to whom he might have confided such information here in Clinton? No. I rather think he was imagining things. You noticed nothing irregular yourself? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. Would that call you just had from Sheriff Doherty cause you not to notice anything? Is that all? I'm dreadfully tired. Thanks for your time. Oh, Miss Hawkins. Yes? If Sheriff Doherty calls again, tell him I'm at the Northern Hotel. Northern Hotel. Good night, Mr. Dollar. Expense account item four, $10.80. One long-distance call to New York. I got Al Davies out of bed and told him the fate of Julian Osborne. Davies requested me to stay on in Clinton to see the matter through. About 11 o'clock that night, I walked over to the site where the new school had once stood. A few firemen and policemen were still around, searching the ashes by the light of lanterns and spotlights. One of them told me the cause of the fire had not yet been determined. I started back to my hotel... Turning a corner by an alley, two men in dark clothes were holding a third man in a sheepskin. A fourth man was giving him the works. Hey, just a minute here. Come on, let's get out of here, boy. Yeah. Yeah, easy now, easy now. You need some help, mister. Everybody needs help. But let me tell you who I am before you help me. Maybe you won't want to. Easy, just take it easy now. I'm... David Baines. You're from out of town, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I thought so. I architected that school that isn't anymore. 
Well, don't you understand, Samaritan? Don't you see? That group of citizens who were working me over just now have kids. Their kids could have been in there when the fire broke out. There is uh, uh, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid they feel I don't design especially good buildings. I took David Baines over to my hotel room, still half unconscious from the beating. I sent the bellboy out for bandages, iodine, and something to take off the chill. While I was patching him up, I was thinking how he'd stood there and taken that beating. Stood there in sight of half a dozen policemen and firemen and let them do that to him. <coughs> yeah, try a little more. Thanks. Uh, who are you? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. I came here about the school. I see. <laughs> do you want to beat me up, too? The company you're working for will be liable. Want some more of this? Uh, what did you say your name is? Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, I'm in a curious position. I designed the school. I planned every feature of it. But I had nothing to do with the building. You don't believe me? I wish you'd explain that. A week before they broke ground, a very important thing happened to me, Mr. Dollar. I went to Europe. I couldn't pass it up. It was a chance to study for another year under some men I'd admired all my life. <laughs> Consider it a scholarship, Mr. Baines. That's what he said. Who said? The man who paid my way to Europe. His name was Roy Vickery. So I went to Europe, and I studied. I came back, and my building was all built. Now it's burnt down. I'm a local boy who's made bad. Very bad. Who's Roy Vickery? The contractor who built it. Oh, I better talk to him. Yes, talk to him by all means. You represent a rich and powerful company, Mr. Dollar. But in Clinton, you're wasting your time. You learn no facts, no information, nothing helpful from anyone here. Particularly Roy Vickery. You're in a tight, hot, mean little burg, Mr. Dollar. All right, let's have it. Was that building fired on purpose? I just told you. You won't find out anything in this town. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow? Well, there's a lot of information to be had in a town that won't talk. And there are times when the silence screams all over the place. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 